Hello everybody. I read that you really enjoy my hands-on videos about design and because I really enjoy working as a product designer and I think that design is the best career option, of course, I decided to make another one. So today we will be uh, talking about fundamentals of product design, such as typographic colors, icons, effects, uh, shadows, a little bit of about layout. And uh, with that said, let's jump into the video. I think that before you dive into modern UI UX product design, it makes sense to look into past uh, as with any other subject and uh, read works of the great designers from 1670s and stuff like that because there is a lot of technical and important stuff and pieces of information to learn. However, before you start with that, I think that it makes sense to dedicate some time to learn how to solve problems and to do quote unquote design thinking. And for that, I would recommend um, Don't Make Me Think and The Design of Everyday Things. As you can see, this book has this like classic red kettle. Everybody who is a designer probably read this book. It's, um, it's like a Bible. And I wouldn't say it's like super helpful for UI UX design, but definitely it gives you the right frameworks uh, for thinking. And then when we, can, uh, when we look at the more technical design, I think I recommended this orange book many times on this channel, Great Systems by uh, Miller Brockman. Uh, he's a, I think, Swiss designer. This book is in English and German language. So if you speak German, then you can read it in, in German, I read it in English. This book is amazing because it has a lot, of, a lot of information about typography, about all of these classic type styles. And then um, it's slowly moving on to talking about different layout for pages. Now, this was like 60s and 70s, so, um, these, uh, these, these designs are obviously for layout on a printed page um, and uh, they are like very relevant when it comes to designing books. It's uh, not the same thing as designing interfaces. However, I think that uh, having, I would say, basis um, of this design and being able to align something on a paper page is not that far away being able to align it on the interface on web or mobile application. And then uh, lastly, I also think that sometimes it's really impressive to look into some logo manuals and uh, um, other things. So this book here is the design manual for the Swiss Federal Railways. Um, and what is amazing about this, this book is that you can, um, you can read all of the stuff about the logo, about the typography, about, uh, about icons. You can even, as you can see, you can even like flip the page um, and you can see how the logo is sort of aligning with the typography. My most favorite part is actually about icons because uh, when I when I was uh, when I was first learning about icons, uh, I had a, I had this problem to sort of understand them, or not like to understand icons, but uh, to understand their alignment and stuff. And uh, here you can like clearly see how icons can be aligned differently. And nowadays everybody is aligning into center. At this period, people were like you know, not aligning everything in the centers and it, uh, it gives it very nice, very nice, interesting wipe. So old logo manuals are, uh, are golden and you can learn a ton from them. Learning design is difficult because you need to navigate a lot of guidelines, books and other materials. And sometimes these materials contradict each other. And I felt that when I was learning design initially five years ago. And that's why I decided to create a handbook that is easy to digest and teaches you all about basics of designs and the best design principles. 
it's filled with my years of experience and also with the advices from the best such as material design apple human interface guidelines and maybe you will find there some of the advice from these older books you can get the book at screenbook.co and we will uh, leave the link down below in the description now when we saw how amazing designers from the past crafted their books and uh, design manuals, let's have a look how these translate into modern design tools such as Figma. So first here we have a typography and this is an example file so you know the structure might be different uh, but I sort of put this one together to show you a couple of basics. Um, we will need a responsive typography because most of the interfaces nowadays, at least on web, are responsive. So you will be using different sizes for mobile, tablet and desktop. And then for each of them, you will be using a different, um, you will be using a different uh, style for uh, sizes. So for example, we have headlines, we have body text, we have things for buttons and then here we have labels. Now, it's important to mention that if I have free headlines on mobile, I will also have free headlines on tablet, and I will have um, free headlines on desktop, and maybe I will add some special style for these giant um, headlines that are just like one or two on the page, and I'm calling it heel, heel, here, sorry. I'm calling it here, hero text. Um, and, uh, I personally uh, like to set my headline slightly more compact. So that means that the line height is uh, like tucked in. And uh, for body text, I like to have it more spread out so you can uh, read it easily. Uh, best practice is um, to, you know, have like a lot of space here because then it's easier to read. And then for buttons, it really doesn't matter because it's probably just one word or two words and for labels again doesn't matter it's 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 a short text um, what some designers do and developers hate uh, with typography is that um, people set h1 so headline first level uh, somewhere on the mobile and then on a desktop it's maybe a headline uh, h2 so headline second level and uh, this is really bad and it messes up development. So if you decide to have something uh, as H1 on mobile, have it H1 on tablet and have it H1 on desktop. So all of the, uh, so all of the text styles or typography styles are following. Um, moving to colors. Um, so for colors, you will definitely need some primary color that you can use for buttons and things that are actionable. And then you might want to have a couple of shades of, these, uh, of, 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 of this color for, I don't know, like, you know, maybe some of the smaller elements, maybe secondary buttons or something like that. You definitely need shades. Um, so you need uh, something that will be the color of the text and maybe somewhere you want a border or you want uh, like a secondary background color. And I personally like to color. If, if, if I like zoom in, for example, on this one, I personally like to add a little bit of, um, a little bit of primary color into my like shades or grades or however you want to call them. And that's because in the nature, things are not entirely, entirely black uh, or like not entirely gray. There is always something like you can see it on this uh, pot for the plant. It is gray, but I would say it's more like a bluish gray or you can uh, see it here on this old iMac. Not sure if you can see it in the, in the frame, but it's, it's silver, but there is a lot of things reflecting from the silver. So it's almost like, orangey silver and the same goes uh, for these shade colors. So I personally like to add primary color in it or sometimes I like to um, take like something opposite of a primary color. So here it's like maybe blue. So I would like take orange and put a little bit orange in it for more like I would say edgy artist to look. So this is one of the tips and the same goes for gradients. Um, and uh, lastly, we can have a look into icons. 
So you will probably need uh, multiple different um, icons. Uh, and, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> you will probably need a multiple di different icon sizes. So here I have 16 pixel icons and 24 pixel icons. And they are line icons, that means that uh, the line uh, is, uh, you know, they are not filled basically. Now for the outlines, it's important that these icons have all of the outlines consistent and the line width is like the same for the bigger icons and for the smaller icons as well because this makes UI cohesive and one of the things that junior designers often do is that they have 24 pixel icon and then they scale it down and then uh, the, the line sizes like uh, you know, uh, different and then like uh, they even scale down even more and then it's again different and this doesn't make sense. The UI is not consistent. So use the same uh, line um, everywhere. And also if you're preparing your one bonus tip for icons, if you are preparing uh, this uh, for your developers, uh, don't forget to outline the stroke because um, it is such a pain for developers to have something that is just a stroke, like an SVG with stroke. Always outline it, they will thank you a million. So in this example file, as you can see, uh, this one is wrong because this is, uh, this is not outlined. And I just need to outline it and now it's, 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 it's correct, it's wonderful. And lastly, from styles, from this example file, we will have a look into shadows or effects because you can have inner shadow, you can get some glow and stuff like that. For shadows, they are usually used for elevation of elements. So you are basically telling the depth of something. And again, shadows in the nature, like here, are not a black color, they are colorful. So don't, don't be afraid to add a little bit of color, like a different color into that gray, like a bluish, maybe greenish, maybe something earthy there. Um, and um, as you can see, if I have an item, like, I don't know, my phone, probably we have to zoom out from Figma so you can see it. If this iPhone here, it's close to the ground, the sh shadow is darker and much sharper. And if I lift this iPhone, it's becoming more soft and lighter. And if I lift it really high, it's almost not there. It's very spread out and very soft. And that's how you do shadows in uh, product design as well. Very sharp and dark and getting softer and softer. All right, guys, that was that. I hope you enjoyed this video, slightly longer than usual, but I wanted to, you know, uh, give you my tips and tricks and I really enjoyed filming this. If you want to support my channel, please consider buying my book because we are not monetizing and I put a lot of work into the book and everything around it. So if you want to support me, please consider buying it. Um, and with that said, thank you so much, guys. I will see you next week. Bye.